Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Twitch is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Twitch. This week in computer hardware with Ryan Shroud. Episode 62 for March 13th, 2010. The Pico Meter. This week in computer hardware is brought to you by Audible.com. For your free audiobook, go to audiblepodcasts.com slash twitch. It's time for Twitch this week in computer hardware, and our Twitcher is here in studio with us, which is awfully nice, Mr. Ryan Shroud from PC Perspective, PCPer.com. Hey, Ryan. Hi, how are you doing? What brings you out to our neck of the woods? Uh, this week is the Game Developers Conference Ooh, in GDC. San Francisco. GDC is going on. Uh, I actually don't really have any meetings there, but all the companies that we're used to dealing with are here again at that time. So we uh, had some meetings with AMD. Yesterday, we'll meet with people like Lucid again. We'll meet cool. with Caustic, maybe NVIDIA, those guys. And, and then we get, to, hopefully, we'll get a chance tomorrow to go see some of the new game engines at work, some of the things that will excite PC users again. I really wanted to get to GDC, and then South by Southwest is kind of at yeah, the same time, and it's unfortunate. I, yeah, I agree. I, I kind of wanted to go South by Southwest, and it was yeah. like, well, for but you. this is which for one? you. Yeah, right, yeah. exactly. I think we both went to and the And South by ones. is for me, kind of more. So, but there's stuff at year. GDC. So, you know, even though GDC it says, you know, it's Game Developers Conference, mm -hmm. it's more than just that. It's hardware, too. And Well, I mean, they don't they don't really demonstrate new hardware there. No one's using it as a launch platform. But a lot of work that these guys do in AMD, Intel, NVIDIA, you know, AMD, both the graphics and the processor side, a lot of the work that they do is is dealing with these developers. Yeah, and gaming uh, is what's driving hardware. Yeah, so. and, and making sure that developers have the product they need, that the developers that are interested in including newer features and advanced right. features have the assistance they need. AMD is doing several discussions at GDC because it's, you know, it's meant for game developers. It's not really meant for media or press or anything like that. So there are a lot of sessions where AMD will discuss how to take advantage of, advantage of DirectX 11 hardware, how you can implement performance improvements and feature improvements oh, interesting. using that. Huh. So it's interesting for me as a, just as an interested party to be able to go in and sit in and listen to, because you can get a lot of insight for what developers are thinking and then right. what maybe the next generation of hardware will improve on or include. Right. Well, that makes a lot of sense. Um. Have you seen anything? Did you did you see? I haven't the, made it to the show floor yet. Oh, you haven't so. seen the on live guys? They haven't run into them yet. <laughs> no, I did. I did your, try your to set arch, up a meeting. Arch enemies. I did try to set up a meeting with them, and they told me that their schedules were full. Oh, and I was late coming in. I, I didn't. Talk to you. Didn't didn't get well, you know, know, arrangements until to Sunday. You, yeah. But we'll see. I mean, they made some good announcements. We'll talk about too. So you know, they they kind of formalized their plans and everything going forward. So. You don't think it was a snub? Probably a little bit. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> well, they didn't exactly guy. say they didn't exactly send an email out and say, "Hey, you're going to be at GDC right. next month" or anything like that. So, eh, you know, I think that's that okay. that's a sign of journalistic um, honor, of pride, right? When when people like that, uh, you have the stamp of yeah, that means you're not in anybody's back pocket, my friend. You are your own man. Hey, did you see my new computer? I did. This I is did. a. This is the, I, I, you know, I've been waiting for an ION-based netbook. Mm -hmm. A little pricey, 500 bucks. This is the uh, Asus uh, 1201N yep. EPC. It's a nice little machine. We, uh, we actually, uh, our, our notebook editor, John, posted a review of oh, that really? just today. Oh. Uh, and uh, so you can go read all about your new toy. Does he like it? He does. Um, Negatives? There, I mean, there are some in that I think what has still has always been the case with ion is it's a little bit overpowered it's for, too much for an atom for the atom processor yeah. and that, that kind of uses a waste, the dual huh? core processor yeah right so is that, I mean, that's you, the latest atom right yeah so it, it's it's going to be a little bit more powerful um a little bit lower battery life maybe than some of the single core ones Ooh. but but not too bad it's still it's still pretty they claim good. five hours yeah i think in our testing we saw something around four just over four <laughs> hours that's good so that's pretty good you know i'm flying to austin uh battery. we'll see how it works yeah, that's that's a perfect just about, flight. Just yeah. about right length. About three hour flight for yeah. you from here. So. Yeah, 
That should work out I'm, well. Right now, I'm installing all this stuff. You know, that's when you get a new computer, it's kind of a It is a pain. pain Building a new process. computer, buying a new computer. First you, thing, take stuff off. Yeah. Windows, uh, I mean, Microsoft Office trial. Yeah. Uh, with four There's language packs, which you have to go through one by one. On there too. Trend, PC, yeah, Cillin. Yeah, yeah. Um, took those off immediately. Um, HP is a little bit worse at it than Asus was. I got the HP Mini 311. Is there a lot of stuff on there? It had a lot of... And it's security software that you tried to remove. Like, it would pop up every time you boot it up, right? They'd say, uh, you want to register this for full support? And the, the button to close it, like, it didn't have an X in the corner. The, the little link to close it was this plain text link. That That's kind of very frustrating. Hidden. And you can't get rid of it? Well, I just am too late. I just, yeah, I could. You know what else is on here that really bugs me is Microsoft late. Works. Really? Why I've in heaven's name? Time. Yeah, why would you put this on there? <laughs> is it the full version, though? I don't know. I tried you know, to uninstall it. Like, yeah, word processor... Spreadsheet, portfolio, database, calendar. Is there any reason to keep that? If you don't want to use Word, you're going to uninstall no, the, the Word trial, just Google the Docs. Office trial. I, well, yeah. If you install Gears, yeah. get it locally, that kind of thing, because you won't be able to use it on your flight. But, Good point. You know, I, I think for the for the type of target user for that. Yeah, I don't want a heavy-duty word processor on here. You know, college students, high school students. You think works is stuff. okay? Yeah, I mean, Maybe I won't take it off. I'll leave I, it. On. I don't use it on a daily basis, but I haven't used it in so long. Can, I can see why people might want it. All right, let me let me let me launch it. I haven't used it. Help us make works better. Yes, I wish to participate in this program. <laughs> I think they need a lot more people to participate in this. <laughs> Copyright 1987. Yeah, baby. Well, actually, <laughs> this goes to 2007. So this is kind of office, it's kind yeah. of stripped down office, right? I'm sure. I, yeah, I'd imagine it has a lot of the same stuff. In yeah. There. So let's talk a little bit about uh, speaking of Jesus. Uh, they have a two new workstation motherboards. Yeah, this was this is real reviewed. quick. This uh, for the target audience that this is looking at. These are the 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 P6 T7 and P7 P55 WS. WS stands for workstation, and these products are beyond most use cases, even for the enthusiast gamer. Uh, the P6 T7, for example, that seven is indicative of there being seven full length PCI Express by 16 Whoa. slots. On the really? motherboard, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, and then the P7, P55 has five of them. So there's a lot of connectivity options here. The P6, T7 is for your Bloomfield, your Core i7, your top-end parts. You know, really, these, these motherboards are meant for low-end servers, high-end um, workstation type things. I, I think the, that, that board's $400, maybe wow. a little bit higher. That's almost uh, as much as my netbook. Yes. Yeah, and you don't even, you don't get a processor. You don't get memory. You don't get right. anything like that. We're talking about just the motherboard. But they're they're high quality. You know, they're not built specifically for overclocking. They don't have a lot of uh, lights and glowing things and, and heat pipes and or uh, fancy things like that. They're meant to be stable. They are meant to be reliable. And uh, they do a pretty good job there. So if, if you are interested in something like that, if you think, wow, I really need four graphics cards and three high-speed storage controllers, you're probably a workstation user, and you might be interested in something like this. So. You know you know if you need this. And we'll talk... Um, we can really, I can't really talk about a whole lot of it because the announcement's not until, like, I don't know, 9 p.m. local time or something like that here. Gulf Town is coming out. Ah. And so that's a 1366 LGA 1366 processor. She'd be able to combine that with this motherboard that has seven PCI Express slots. And I bet you'd what have a beast. A fairly. What would you use seven? System. Give me an example of seven different things you might want to put in your PCI slot. That's <laughs> tough. Uh, <laughs> well, for, I guess if you're using a Crossfire. Uh, if you're using multi GPU configurations, you could take, up, take two up two or three. three. Yeah, more than um, two sometimes. Maybe two. Uh, you, if we're talking workstations, more likely Quadro users than right. GeForce users necessarily. Right. So multiple graphics cards for multiple displays. Uh, you might want to have both with Windows 7. You have the ability to run both an NVIDIA and an ATI card in the same system. Maybe that will help you do debugging and that kind of stuff. But then you get into storage controllers, yeah, are really right, the only other right, thing that right. really pushes can push PCI Express bandwidth where where you might actually need it. But no, I mean, there's most people listening to this. Probably all people listening to this don't need something like that. Well, we're not talking need. Yeah, I, don't, I, I bet even Colleen would have trouble finding stuff to put in all seven of these PCI Express slots. I'm sure she'll come down later and tell me that, she, that I was wrong and she's got plenty oh, no, of I stuff. Oh, no, I have it. I've obviously got it right now. <laughs> so the, the but, full uh, yeah. review of the uh, uh, P6, T7, and P7, P55 WS workstation motherboards online at PCPer.com. Yep. This next item, uh, kind of a shocker. Newegg sold... 
have you, have you talked about this yet? Have you heard you know, information I, about this yet? I have read the story, and I haven't talked about it, and I think it's kind of a shocker. These weren't even, they, they were fake i7s. Yeah, but they weren't even processors. They were just pieces of plastic. There's, there's right? a link to a YouTube video in there of a, of a of a guy opening up the box that he gets. So what happened was, some customers of Newegg found that the Core i7 920 processors that they had ordered were fake, um, fairly well made fakes, at least from the outside. Oh, so they are processors. They're not processors. They're not. Like as soon as you They're, open the box, you realize you know, that immediately. You got, <laughs> you got you got screwed on that. I mean, but so the box know, looks real. The box the, the looks dip, real. There's everything. Only, there's only a couple things. He tries to zoom in there and see that there's like a couple of grammatical mistakes yeah. in the box. But yeah. um, you know, you're going through that. You see the sticker through the window there. It kind of like it looks like a traditional Intel fan right. sticker. It looks very realistic from the outside. The front of it looks. It's a well-made counterfeit. Exactly. Yeah, but then you look and you see. Boy, that's a lot of work. They put it. That's blister a piece pack. of cardboard. Where the fan would be. Where the fan would be. There's a piece of cardboard shaped like a fan. <laughs> and then this is the best part. Let's see. There's, there's the instruction manual. It's blank. It's blank. Stapled block of paper. And then when you look at the processor, the face of it looks looks like a processor. Watch me flip it over. No pins. No pins. That's it's kind of a flat. giveaway. Yeah. It's a piece of plastic. That's now, a pretty good fake. It is. It is. I mean, I can see how it fooled Newegg. I don't blame Newegg on that. Uh, I don't. No, I, I don't think we can do that. So what, what happened was the kind of history of events a lot of people in the forums were or some people in the forums said hey i got this processor it was fake and we went back to it and everybody had purchased it from newegg and actually uh kyle over at hard ocp did a lot of the of the investigating on this and it turned what the what turned out to happen was one distributor that intel or that newegg works with was responsible for the shipment of cpus that came into them that had these fakes and now we don't know at what point the fakes were introduced into the line whether or not it was before the distributor with the distributor uh, and shipping to Newegg, right. anytime somebody inside Newegg, we don't really think that would be the case. But uh, the, the Intel got involved because Newegg initially said, "Well, these are demo boxes. It was our mistake." It kind of looks like demo, demo boxes. boxes, yeah. But the misspellings and the grammatical changes, mm. not so much. Mm. And Intel came out and said, "We never made demo boxes oh. for these. Please don't, you know, try to don't blame us. Don't blame us." Um, so there was there was a lot of hubbub going on about that but Newegg has done from reports very well replacing the processors very quickly and they've even gone to reaching out people that have ordered parts that may have been affected by that i would hope if you were in, you know if you bought one you would know unless you bought it like to hold on to for, uh, hold on to for later put it on a shelf or give it as a gift to a friend you know that could be nice you get you order a cpu and mail it to your buddy for his birthday, and he opens it up, and it's like, wow, thanks. Happy birthday, dude. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> Here's a piece of plastic with no pins. <laughs> That's the giveaway. Uh, I surely hope nobody actually ins tried to install it. Did you see um, Bunny Wong's blog? He wrote about mm -hmm. um, buying bad flash rams. And uh, what he the story he told was fascinating. I should send you a link to this. This um, is the Kingston. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I did hear about this. So Bunny is a really smart guy. We interviewed him when he was the first to hack the Xbox when he was at MIT. Mm -hmm. uh, Bunny Studio, B-U-N-N-I-E Studios uh, dot com is the uh, blog site. And so he, uh, I guess he's got a new business. He works for the, he's a, he, he does the Chumbi. And uh, they bought a bunch of uh, memory for the Chumbi, Kingston micro SD cards, and they were all bad. Hmm. Now, most people would have just sent them back, gotten a refund. Um, uh, but wait a minute. Um, he, you know, he, he's, he said the Kingston won't take them back. So yeah. he started doing some investigations. And what's interesting is that, that apparently in some of these factories, they have phony shifts. So, you know, they bin sort these chips. They test mm -hmm. them. They're bad. They throw them in a bin. This is the bad bin. Some guy comes in late at night, uses the same fab line because it's got the right, you know, stamps and everything, and uh, takes the bad memory and fabricates, you know, a thousand chips, right. which they then take. They don't sell them through Kingston. Right. They don't sell them through the factory. They just take them and they sell them somewhere, some counterfeit eBay or whatever. And uh, this is apparently not an uncommon practice. And he just got to happen to get a big bunch of these. That's, yeah, I mean, it's completely believable having gone through these fab facilities in, in China and Taiwan and other places, how this would, would happen. Right. right. So obviously, they, hopefully the response to this is more security, security with those bad items. 
right? As opposed well, and to I have tossing to think them to the side. That that might be the case with this new egg. Uh, I mean, you know, maybe these i sevens were you know something like that. Well, they, I mean, there's some they, scammers out there. They yeah. didn't do a very good job in this case. No, no, no. no. <laughs> they didn't try too hard. It, it's better than I would be able to do creating something right. to try to pass off. I mean, you know, you got to print out the box, you got to make the plastics. And, and so the reports are that there might be, there were 300 out of 2,000 processors that Newegg bought from this distributor. That many? Had that. <gasps> wow. But you got to think, I'm, I'm guessing that there's a lot more than 300 of them out there because would you really go through all that trouble of making right. the box and the no, plastic no, no, and no. all the parts yeah, and, only, yeah. and only do 300 You're going to do a run parts, or two. You know? Yeah. So, you know, I guess if the... The story will be is if you see a bunch of Core i7 920 processors for sale on eBay, like in the next week, two <laughs> well, weeks. Right. Might you want to think twice there. Uh, yeah. Either think twice or those are the stolen ones. Right. You know, and maybe you can get a good deal. It was was Newegg at least charging a good price on these bogus cards? I guess doesn't really matter. No, I, I mean, they, yeah, they're, they're good prices. Good they deal. Got them, they got them replaced. Good so, deal. You know, yeah, they stood by. It helps. Good for them. It helps. Yeah. Uh, moving uh, right along to our uh, next item, um, we don't, oh wait, but you know what? Let's do a commercial. You put a, you put a little place in there for the commercial. Let's do it. I try. You're a nice guy. <laughs> it's a good time to mention our friends at Audible.com. Audible's a great place to get audio books. Of course, you all know about Audible. I have to tell you about Audible. A u d i b l e dot com. If you go to audiblepodcast dot com slash twitch, so that Ryan gets credit for it. You get a chance to get a free book. How about that? Now, there are 70,000 books to choose from, including the Yugo, The Rise and Fall of the Worst Car Ever Designed. <laughs> I, I know. That sounds good, doesn't it? A History of Ghosts, The True Story of Seances, Mediums, Ghosts, and Ghouls. Um, the House of Tomorrow, House Rome, some great stuff in here. I'm going to recommend a, a book we interviewed the guys yesterday. That's re I've been reading it. I'm loving it. It's called Rework. Jason Freed and David Heinemeyer Hansen. They started 37 Signals. Hansen wrote Ruby on Rails, and they have made a great book, a, a kind of an anti-business book. The, the stuff that you should know as a business person, since you and I are both small businessmen, mm -hmm. and I mean tiny, <laughs> <laughs> this might be a great book. Oh, actually, I'll get you my copy. It's really good. And do listen to Ned at Night um, from this week if you want to know more about it. But this could be yours free. Well, it doesn't have to be. I mean, there's so many choices. In fact, right now, the big tournament of audiobooks is going on now. It's a bracket-style tournament you vote for. This is, they make it fun to read, i got to say. This is the full bracket here. You vote for, you know, books go head-to-head, -head, right? So you vote for The Help versus Craig Ferguson's American on Purpose. Which oh boy, those are two really good books. Or Juliet Naked versus Pride and Prejudice and Zombies. One serious, one not so serious. A Prayer for Owen Meany versus the Lost City of Z. See, and then the winners get to move on. It is really, it is really cool. I highly recommend Audible.com, and they do things like this that just make it more fun to read. And you'll see stuff, and you go, oh, I haven't read that. Oh, I gotta read that. I'll tell you one for the ladies that I'm really enjoying. The Time Traveler's Wife. Did you see that movie? <gasps> what a romantic book this is. I'm really digging it. And of course, what are you looking at? And of course, <laughs> look at I didn't I, say anything. I, 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 yeah, you're looking at How about this one? Pete Nelson's I Thought You Were Dead. Um, this sounds good. For Paul Gustafson, a hack writer for the wildly popular For Morons series. Get it? <laughs> Life is a succession of obstacles. His wife has left him. His father has suffered a debilitating stroke. His girlfriend is dating another man. That's not so good. No. And his overachieving brother has invested his money, his parents' money, in stocks that tanked. Not a very good overachiever. Mm. Sounds funny. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds funny. I'll tell you what. Go to audible.com. Browse around. Once you find a book that you like, you can get it free by going to audiblepodcast.com slash twitch. Listen in the car. Listen on the plane. If you travel a lot, it's a lifesaver. A-U-D-I-B-L-E podcast.com slash Twitch. We thank them so much for their support of This Week in Computer Hardware. It's nice that they support this show. It is, very much so. I really appreciate that. That's a nice thing that they're doing there. Did you see our uh, Lisa Tickled Pink? Yes, I saw that. I, I listened, listened on Sunday. Yeah. And now I just I saw a link in the chat, and I had to click on it. 17,000. 17, We're beating Conan. <clears throat> it is. 
it boggles my mind because I've been on this show yeah, and, and you, on your shows you're for years. Anywhere I near the, close that. I know. I think a number of people it's, said, it's the, uh, why didn't you promote us like you're promoting this stranger? <laughs> this is a stranger, Leah. What, what's up? Is the secret the fun of it or is the secret the giving it. away the iPad? Well, it certainly doesn't help, hurt. No. In, in fact, you could probably say on this show, I will give an iPad to a random follower, it might help your follow. But see, I never wanted to do that with my own stuff, right? Right, I agree. I, I like, never did I would that. like the 2,000 people that follow me to actually be interested yeah. in what I have to say. But I don't mind messing with Lisa's followers. <laughs> she <laughs> seems to be taking thrilled. it well. Are yeah. you kidding? Yeah. Who wouldn't be? She's got 17,000 <laughs> followers. So uh, on live, uh, may not have invited you to their event, but you, no. as the good journalist that you are, are going to cover their... They finally announced availability. Exactly. And um, pricing. Availability and pricing. So the it's going to be publicly available on June seventeenth. Well, that's soon. It's coming up pretty soon. That's exciting. Uh, so on PC and Mac, the PC and Mac client will be available on June seventeenth. Now the uh, what do we call it again? The micro console, like the little external box that you right. hook up to a TV that has its own kind of controller. Do you have to have that? No. No, you can run the PC or Mac. So. Right, so you run PC and Mac is going to be available first. They're saying the micro console will be available later in the year. I see. Um, I think that is really where they'll see the most people who don't have success. computers, so they or even consoles, so they want to play mm -hmm. games. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or people who have like a PS2, right. PlayStation 2, but don't want to spend the money right, to upgrade, upgrade yep. to the 360 or the PS3 or something like that. So June 17th, the pricing is a little bit. Concerning to me. Uh oh, how much? Uh, fourteen ninety five a month. Well, that sounds like for a good the service, deal. but that does not include games. Oh, that's the service without any games. Correct. So fourteen ninety five a month. You should throw in a couple of crap is games. Is for you get the 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 video, the friending service, the the video services like where you can save stuff. Uh, you get access to the demos and that kind of thing. So you'll be able to like test play some games before you buy them so that's okay. good that's um but they they have not it's like if announced. steam charged you to, to to use steam i that would be annoying i couldn't agree more yeah um the, but and the thing is they haven't announced pricing on the games yet they're saying that there will be purchases and rental options so that's good you could rent a game for you know a week or two weeks or something like that and, and then it would be disabled on your on your account and that kind of thing so i think there's feasibility there Purchases, I'm not a very, just, I mean, at least with Steam, you actually download something to your, to your system mm -hmm. when you're buying something. When you, if you buy something on, on live, <clears throat> all you're really guaranteeing is that you get semi-permanent access to it. You just really don't have access. You don't get any content. I mean, you know, the whole, idea, a lot of people complained when we moved to something like Steam because you don't even get a box. You don't even get a disc, right? Why, what are you spending money on? Well, yeah. now you're even spending money on less if you're purchasing so a system. That on doesn't online. include the little handheld thing or anything. No, the fourteen ninety five a month. Nothing. You get no. nothing. You get you get their community services and access to the system where you'll be able to buy and rent games. Um, but That's actually, actually, that analogy they, they that you said you is a really good free. idea because yeah. Steam is free. Yeah, and you can download demos right. on Steam for right. free. And that's just they're confused. They're confused. That's not a good business model they got there. Right. A lot you, of people are saying they need to go after like the App Store right. model. You, nobody Give away the Apple App doesn't charge. Yeah, they don't charge you for the right to buy. Well, I guess they do in a way because you have to, to have an iPhone phone. or an iPod Touch. So maybe it's more like that. They feel like, I just, I think that, and how much are the games going to be? Do we know? We don't maybe, know. That, that's Maybe the if they were like $3. I don't think that's going to happen, but it's a good thought. Uh, you know, rentals will probably be the most feasible option here, uh, especially if like maybe you can rent a game for a few days and right. it will keep your save game, even if your rental runs out type of thing. Um, but I'd imagine, based on what we have seen with Steam and, and downloadable content, downloadable system, or downloadable games, prices never, prices didn't really drop. No. Right. If, if we're well, Steam about, they did. For new releases and stuff. Right. But, I mean, you're, Steam you get amazing them. deals. I mean, one of the things that makes With the power stuff, Steam is like $9 weekends and things like right. that. Right. That's huge. Yes. Agreed. But will they will they be doing that on OnLive? I'm not sure. So, well, I mean, nobody's going to sign up for titles. this. Nobody's going to sign up for this unless they have something. I mean, I'm not going to just pay $14.95. Well, right. I mean, you can pay $14.95 a month and get, and if you don't want to buy one of the games that they have, Right. You're still paying fourteen ninety five a month. I guess the theory would be well nice because you're providing your own computer. Yeah. 
<laughs> they're going to have 12 to 25 games available at launch, they said. So You know, Steam is going to be available for the Mac now. So yep. we'll I think that, that that's their bit. competition. Uh, I, yeah, agreed. Um, and so it's got to be the only people who would be interested in this are people buying the little handheld doohickey. They're not committed enough to games to pay $15 a month. I think this is a big mistake. But, you know, keep in mind, we, with this, you'll be able to, you theory, theoretically, you'll be able to game on your Asus 1201N. Really? Mm -hmm. Because it's all streaming video. Okay, so when they say PC, they don't mean what, PC special. PC or Mac. So remember that PC. OnLive doesn't require you to have local right. hardware. It's just, video. It's just right. streaming video. Right. As long as your system can handle that decode process right. Right. and has a broadband internet connection, it's supposed to work. Okay. Supposed to. Oh, okay. We'll see on June 17th. And they mentioned games are going to have Mass Effect 2, Assassin's Creed 2, Borderlands, Dragon Age. So they're, they're working with the right people in terms of content. Uh, but would... Am I willing to pay sixty dollars or fifty dollars for Mass Effect Two on on Live versus the same price for Steam versus the same price for going into the store and picking it up? Do you think we're paying for? I mean, it's kind of like paying for Xbox Live. Somebody's pointing this out in chat room. You have the Xbox, you pay for it. You have the game, you pay for it. That's that's, that's you pay exactly to be online. Like yes, but it's not fifteen bucks a month to play. It's five or five so. or something. Yeah. I think it's like 60 bucks a year, 50 bucks a year. Uh, that, that's also a good analogy because, I, and most people, when you ask them, will say that Xbox should not be charged, or Microsoft should not be charging for Xbox Live anymore. It made sense at the beginning, try to build the infrastructure, try to prove to people that there were going to be people online. Blizzard who doesn't charge for Battle.net. Right. Steam doesn't charge. Right. They make, make it up in the, the games. PlayStation, PSN doesn't charge. You're not charged. On, to, to be a member of PSN, to be on PSN, you yeah. create an account and you're free, and then you can go download all the games. And I think most people in the gaming media agree with that, that Xbox Live should not be charging anymore. Right. But, $7 a month. And, and, and it, can't be, it can't be a huge part of their revenue. And if it is, sorry, I don't know. It's like, you know. Then you have the bad revenue model. The cable company probably gets a bunch of this fourteen ninety five. How, how are they? Do, how, the cable companies aren't involved yet. You're not. You're not doing it through the cable company or your internet service not yet, provider. Not yet. You're buying this directly from online. This is strictly through online. Huh. That surprises me. That's not what I thought. I think their eventual goal is to involve cable companies, involve service providers, right. uh, sell it to uh, Comcast as a service they can offer to their customers through their set top box. Right. So imagine getting. Uh, a Comcast set-top box that's a DVR slash game console slash right. whatever that comes with a little controller that you hook up to it. That's so, kind of the main idea. So what, uh, what is the term of the contract? Can I go month to month? Yes. twelve ninety five or fourteen ninety five is the month to month. And then I think they, say, they said there'll probably be a yearly discount or something like that as well. And uh, they're, apparently they're going to... How much I, is Gamefly? That's about what Gamefly costs. Yeah, Gamefly's probably 15 bucks that's a month. That's about what Gamefly nine costs. Nine bucks a month. Yeah. So if you're in Netflix yeah. pricing range. And that includes a game. Yeah, yeah, you get as many games as you can play through right. in a month, right? So there's there are definitely some I think this is gonna concerns. this is gonna be a stumble. We'll see. They can always change the pricing model. They yeah. don't have to. Yeah, yeah, I agree. They can do that. If you want to, we can go we can talk directly, skip ahead a little bit, and jump to their competition. Steam. I'm so excited it's coming to the Mac. Yep, so Valve this, is announced this is huge. Steam service is coming to the Mac. It's huge. And not only that. Because we, we had heard rumors about this last week, and Colleen and I were talking about it. What what does that actually mean? Does that just mean they're bringing the Steam client to the Mac, where they actually kind of convert games over convert to the Mac? Games. So what they've done is they they've, they've obviously made the Steam client for the Mac, but they've also converted their Steam engine, the game engine, to OpenGL and Mac. So awesome. So what this means is now, for the first time in a long time, maybe ever, I can't really. There were there was a time when Mac. In PC gaming, were kind of uh, running in parallel. Halo was off. based on a Mac game called Marathon that was Mac right. only. Right, the uh, Mythic. Yeah, was the developer. So there time. were yeah. there were you know Mac wasn't always you know left behind, but uh, in in modern times, of course, not yes. even close. And that's what everybody always says to me is, should I get a Mac? And I say, well, if you're a gamer, no. That's the one thing that PCs really have. Going so in for April them. now, Steam and Valve's library of games will be available on the Mac. Is that what? Left 4 Dead, Left 4 Dead 2, Team Fortress 2, Counter-Strike, Portal, Half-Life series. What? Uh, so, do the Steam engine, does mm -hmm. everything, I mean... Not all the games. So that that's the important part here is the Valve branded games, the Valve developed games that use that engine include Half-Life, Portal, Counter-Strike. That's Team really Fortress, the Half-Life engine, Dead. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, so those games will run on the Mac Anything because on the that engine, engine has been converted right. as well. Not just the Steam And client. they say going forward, we're going to ship for both Mac, Windows, and Xbox at the same time. Simultaneously. Yay! And it gets, even, such it, good gets, news. it gets even better because of the they've been they've been talking about Steam Cloud Service, which is uh, they already implement it where it saves your keyboard configuration, your mic configuration, any of your you know any of the changes Across, you make to the options. Oh, so great. if you log in another computer, you don't have to reset oh, all your options. That's, that's great. great. Steam, these guys are brilliant. See, this is where on live just didn't. And get it gets it. better. There's more because now your save games are going to be stored on the cloud. So you could, in theory, <laughs> sit here while people are talking to you and play your. Half-Life 2, Half-Life 3, when it comes out on your MacBook, go home, turn on your PC, and resume the game from that same <laughs> spot. So, are Mac video cards powerful enough to play these games? Uh, They're a little behind, aren't that's, they? I mean, it, it's, it's a good question, because the one thing, this, this brings gaming to Mac, what it doesn't do is change the hardware ecosystem right. that Apple has right. fostered. Which has not flows. been a big gaming system. Right. I mean, if you have a... if you. I mean, you can't, like your iMac here, you can't upgrade that right. if you want to. Right. You can upgrade a Mac Pro if you get uh, a graphics card that has drivers compatible with, with Mac OS. And not all cards are, are built to work with Mac OS. So are they powerful enough? Yes. If you have, if you have a, Mac, a, a modern MacBook Pro that has discrete graphics or an iMac that has discrete graphics, you'll be able to play these games. I mean, you're not going to play them as as well as you could on a Radeon, you know, 5770 or a, an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 260 or 285 or something like that mm -hmm. because the graphics performance on those systems is significantly lower. And what's interesting is that it never really mattered before. Right, right. Nobody, now we nobody, care. Nobody cared that right. Mac had slower graphics. <laughs> now really. I'm thinking I want to upgrade my and now cards. now everybody's going to go, well, I don't, do I really want to get that iMac that's completely sealed and closed right. now if I'm going to do gaming on it because I won't be able to upgrade? How demanding is Left 4 Dead 2? Is it really demanding? It's not too demanding. So, no, all, so none bad. of these Half-Life engine games are that hard, that tough. Not yet. But, I mean, they're going to make, they're going to make new engines. They're going to make right. new games uh, probably before the end of the year. I so mean, Left 4 Dead 2 is, I mean, you're talking about a 9600, right. a GeForce 9600 in these systems. Right. It'll run, but, it, I mean... You're not going to get 1,600 great. by 1,200. Right. Uh, and will this, I wonder if this will hold Steam back a little bit in their development. I guess not. I don't think so. I, I they're, think, not gonna, they're not going to hobble they said stuff. There was, there was a quote they had in here um, where the engine has been converted, their internal development house has been completely converted. When they make a, when they commit a change to the software engine, it is automatically creates both an Xbox, a Windows, and a Mac uh, executable and they go and test it immediately. Wow. That's so, so they've done neat. a very good job. Now the interesting thing will be if other developers follow suit. Right? So all the other games, not all games on Steam are made by right. Valve. Right. In fact, the vast majority are not. Right. You can buy Mass Effect 2, that's by uh, BioWare, you can buy Assassin's Creed 2, it's by Ubisoft. Will those will those developers also convert their games to run to be compatible on the Mac? And I think it's it's one of those endeavors that's very very complex. Right. Valve has spent a lot of time and invested a lot of money in this one specific so this, game engine. You think this has been going on for a while that they've been? Oh yeah, because they basically they've converted the game from DirectX only to being OpenGL compatible. That's a huge thing, right? And there. that's not an easy thing to right. do. It's not something they did in a couple of. And weeks that'll be true months. on PC too. That it won't use DirectX. Uh, I think they will have both code paths in there, ah, so okay. um, they'll be able to take advantage of it one way or the other. Because in and and in and honesty. OpenGL has really fallen back on in the world of PCs. Most people are, are really focused on direct right. because no, no. OpenGL that, has kind of stagnated. That happened a long time ago. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely has. So it's 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 an interesting move forward. I think it's pretty cool. Um, it gives it gives users of Mac hope. That, uh, <laughs> it does. It gives me hope. It gives it gives, it gives Mac hope. fans hope that, hope that you won't get you know. I mean, there are some games. I mean. We talked about this a little bit last week, and I got several emails from people say, "Hey, here's the, the store for Mac, and you can get Call of Duty Four for the Mac. We can't get Call of Duty for Modern Warfare Two. Modern Warfare Two, no. No, I mean, you, you, how, well, how long this are is, you waiting for that? And this doesn't so. guarantee that either. No, to it be doesn't. Fair. But it's it's moving in that direction. So, yeah, no, I think it's huge news, and uh, Mac people should be very happy. Hey, it's. It's the best you're going to get. <laughs> Let's put it this way. I mean, Steam really is the dominant gaming platform now. Every game I buy on the PC is on Steam. Me if, too. If it is an option, 
It's, yep. it's bought on Steam. I mean, actually, um, one of the hardware companies gave us a copy of a game. They, they email out email out keys because they want us to use these specific right. games to test their hardware or whatever. We play all we play through all these games, and they sent us one for an EA download, uh, which EA has their own download service where you can download a game and install nah. it and all kind of stuff. No, sorry, and you know what? Nah. I said I'm not gonna I'm, put it on Steam. I'm gonna pass it the free. I'm gonna spend <laughs> our money and buy the one on Steam because it's that much easier, and I like having the coherency mm -hmm. with everything. Mm -hmm. and, and well, it and it's easy. for people like you and me a little bit who uh, have a lot of new machines. If you, yes. it, it, that's a lot. Some of it is that is merely that. The that we change machines a lot. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I mean, it's 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 just convenient. Right. It's nice to have. Sure is, sure is. What's Warpia? Warpia. This was a an interesting little device that came uh, came through our inbox recently, and this is it's a small company that I'd never really heard of before that they're de debuting a wireless laptop docking station. Um. Essentially what it is, is it's a device that uses software and two USB connections. One attaches to a laptop, the other attaches to a, like an external box that has a DVI connection, two USB connections, and an audio connection. Hmm. So essentially, if you want to have a, a desktop configuration with a mon external monitor, keyboard, mouse, speakers, higher quality speakers in which you get in your laptop, you attach, these, you attach this USB device to your laptop. And it transmits the video, the audio, the, the input, all that kind of stuff through wireless connectivity. So it's wireless. It's not wireless USB. How do I say this? It's, it's using a USB device to create a wireless network between two things. So then you could have this, I could have this laptop here on my desk and have the computer. But it's not Wi-Fi. It's not Wi-Fi. It's not Wi-Fi. It uses some kind of custom connectivity option uh, for that, the only problem is it's like $150, which is really steep. Hmm. It only supports up to 1440 by 900 resolution because of the bandwidth right. involved. Uh, you know, 32-bit color, 48 kilohertz, 16-bit audio, Windows and Mac ready. It's 128-bit encrypted. It's kind of an interesting little idea. Uh, remember, we talked about Intel Wi-Di, right? Wireless display. Wireless display, and they hate it if you call it Wi-Di. Uh, <laughs> um, this is a similar thing. But it's for it's like having a KVM or a dock station. Like you know, if you if you have a laptop and you come home and you set it down on your desk and you plug in the keyboard and you plug in the the monitor cable and you plug in the speakers and now you've got a desktop computer. This is that only you don't have to connect any. Cables. I have a UWB device that does this ultra wideband. Really? Device. Okay. Yeah, I think the the Dell Latitude Z. Oh, that's Z right. That's right. Uh, comes with a UWB. I think it's using UWB. Which is a standard. I don't know what this is using. It doesn't look like UWB. No, I don't. But that's fast is. enough to do display, USB, sound. Everything's mm -hmm. wireless. In yep. fact, it's kind of cool because you put the Dell down on the stand. It's using inductance charging. There's right. no wires except the stand's plugged in. And then it docks, and I've got the speakers and the computer monitor and the keyboard and mouse, and I'm just using it. That's pretty cool. So it's very cool. So it's some, something like this. Yeah. But it, it, something interesting came by. I wouldn't tell anybody to pay $150 for it yet, but it's nice to see I'm sure I'd pay where a things lot are more. going. A you lot probably more paid than a lot that more than that for that, for Dell, Dell, one. Yes. that Dell fans. It's an executive PC. <laughs> and I'm an executive, so I deserve that, it. What's that translate into, executive PC? Uh, I think three or $4,000. Oh, okay, all right. All right. <laughs> when you get all the crap. And, you know, it wasn't even that fast because it's the ULC processor, you know, so it's a, like uh, 1.6 gigahertz ULC uh, Intel. So it's like... Mm. It's kind of, it's probably, this is probably just as, just as fast. It's, it's nice to look at. 500 bucks. <laughs> oh, it well, is pretty. You can't make an omelet without breaking No, eggs, right, right? and it is pretty. Everybody, uh, everybody likes it. So that's the Warpia. Yep. Now, this next story is kind of uh, interesting. You have a six-panel Ifinity. Yeah, it's not Do a, you have this? Yes. So there, there's a picture of me sitting in front of a six-panel Ifinity gaming configuration. Three uh, by two, so three across, two, two high, so a three by two matrix of displays. These are God, that's incredible. Twenty two inch, ten eighty p monitors. <sighs> so, and I, I, I got the tape measure out, and from corner to corner, it's like a sixty five inch display, sixteen by nine display. It's Man. almost a sixteen by nine form factor there. Um, we've got that set up. And then, unfortunately, like the next day, I had to leave for this. <laughs> so you know what's at home waiting so for you, but you haven't been able to use it. it. So did you play it all? Were you able to play it I all? I got to play right in that in the photo in there. I'm actually playing God, Aliens versus Predator. That's amazing. Uh, I did play Supreme Commander 2, which is a real-time strategy game. 
uh, that was really cool. The ability, because you one of the features of the game is you can zoom out really far and zoom in really close to the characters, uh, to the to the units and stuff. And it's what what I found to happen was so I'm using this. You can see it's like a normal table, it's a normal desk that we had it set up on, and the keyboard and mouse where they're setting, right there. I can't use it there because I'm too close. You're too close to the giant display like it's too I have, big i have to physically scoot back oh that's pretty funny and do it and so then, you need wireless mouse and keyboard so right wireless mouse and keyboard but then something to put them on right or besides your lap right exactly so or you need two desks using a controller this, this game needs two desks you need a desk and a tv tray like it's like a, like a tv <laughs> dinner night uh stand there that's what that's what it means oh, i love it uh but or i was using it uh playing hawks with the um xbox controller so the is this the new? The new so is this the because the old Ifinity was three screens? Yeah, three, three by one. So this is powered by the Ifinity, the Radeon HD fifty eight seventy Ifinity edition graphics card, which has six mini Display Port outputs on a single card. Now we're seeing the value of mini Display Port for sure. Yes, because you, you can, can get no six real across on yeah. one side of it. Wow. Um, yeah, and then <laughs> and See, then all of these. So then we have six. Mini Display Port to Display Port adapters coming out of the back of the car. That's amazing. Because uh, actually, they do make Mini Display Port to Display Port cables, but we only had Display Port <laughs> to Display Port, so we had six different little adapters as well. So you can get it a little bit cleaner than that, but it's still pretty cool. It's it's. I mean, you can kind of tell in the photo, but it's a rat's nest behind there in terms of the the kind of cabling involved and oh yeah, getting six monitors powered. And six monitors connected oh, yeah. to a single That's PC. That's crazy. That's but it crazy works. Time. I mean, it works fairly well. They have some bugs they're working out. It's a little bit glitchy in some cases. That's why it's not officially launched do, yet. Do the bezels bother you? Right now, they do. At first, they did. You get used. You don't get used to them, right? Well, I, I don't know. I need to spend more time with it. Right. Um, they have bezel correction. They're going to have bezel correction in this driver, <laughs> which means... Oh, so the, where you see a bezel is a gap or... Right now... In, in that photo, I didn't have bezel correction enabled. And you can kind of tell if you look at the, the gun doesn't line up. from the muzzle and yeah. or the gun, they don't, yep. they, don't, they don't line up. With bezel correction, they would. The problem with bezel correction is that stuff that's behind it is gone. It's, I mean, you don't get to see it. Right. One instance where that would be a so problem. So it's like you're looking through a window. Right. Supreme Commander 2, when you bring up the menu, it centers the menu on your screen. Right. The problem is, is if you're using bezel correction... <laughs> some of the options are going to be behind that bezel. Right. And you, so don't, that's not you good. don't know what they are. So, you, so uh, one of the things that AMD was, was, was adamant about discussing while we were out here was their involvement with developers and how they're teaching them how easy, they, as they say, it's very, very easy, very, very quick to make a couple of changes to make sure that kind of stuff doesn't happen. Right. Where things aren't hidden in the bezels, where you center things on a certain screen as opposed to centering them globally on the display, on the iFinity display. So, we're I'm, you know we're looking forward to getting back and, and, and playing with that. Uh, I think yeah, I bet you are. We're on, yeah. <laughs> we're <laughs> How's on the frame rate? How's the frame rate? Well, it depends on the game. Uh, we're talking about a single GPU card. It has two gig frame buffer on it. So it's it has the the regular fifty eight seventy that supported three displays has one gig of frame buffer. This one has two, so it, that helps it support larger resolutions uh, without slowing down as much. But we're talking about a 5760 by 2160 resolution display. Hmm. 5760. So it's about 12.4 megapixels. It's a lot of pixels. It's 60 frames a second. We're talking, I don't know. So pushing 200 a lot of pixels. Million, 200 million pixels a second. Something like that. No, more than that. But That's I mean, amazing. it's a significant amount. So I mean, yeah. computing power is going to be, could be a, a potential problem here for the GPU. AMD loves that though. Because now you buy a second card. Right. to do crossfire with right. and, and do that. And, and, and this is, I mean, this, this 3D vision, those types of things where 3D vision doubles the number of pixels you have to render per second to get that to work. And, and, and graphics cards guys love this because they're going to be able oh, to sell sells products. You bet. And, and as enthusiasts, we should like it as well because that is pushing them to develop right. newer, faster, faster cards. hardware. Yeah, yeah. You know, when the 6000 series comes out in a year or whenever it is, it will be more powerful and still support Ifinity. And these games that ran a little bit slower, 5760 by 2160, uh, will run faster. Right. And for now, you can, um, you know, you can choose to, to lower the image quality or, or use a lower resolution and that kind of stuff. So, I mean, 
Far Cry 2 at that resolution with 8x anti-aliasing and ultra-high settings, probably not going to be your best experience. So maybe set it to high instead of ultra-high, maybe 2x AA instead of 8, and you're talking about a completely pay playable experience. So it's do you value that image quality difference versus having an enormous screen? <laughs> it is enormous. I mean, you said on that desk before that, I had a 30-inch Apple Cinema display. And that seemed big. And it's tiny now. Now it's nothing. You right. spoiled yourself. Exactly. So now it's like... So this is kind of like a 60-inch TV, it almost looks like, roughly. Yeah, it's 65 inches from corner to corner, and it's... <laughs> it's, it's... I mean, yeah. We had to clear out room. It's wider than the 16.9, it looks like. Uh, I think it is. Yeah. Because we're doing... It's, they're 16 by 9 displays, but we're not installing them in a 16 by 9 ratio, right. so... Right. Yeah. It's thirty-two by eighteen. Yes. No. No. But what what yeah. it's what it's not is <laughs> so if you if you no, if you if you cover up the top forty-eight by eighteen. If you cover <laughs> if you cover up the top three displays, you just look at the bottom three there. That's a three by one Ifinity configuration. So right. then you're talking about a much much higher ratio of resolution width width to height. To height. Right. Whereas here it's more normal. Spread it out. Yeah. Yeah. So it's so, more like a big screen TV would look. Yeah. Frankly, that it's would closer. be the better solution. Yeah. The problem, of course, me. will be. It's not going to be great for first-person shooters to work on six displays. If you yeah. look there, you can see it's for a flight sim. Where my cursor is is in that bezel, <laughs> right? I mean, if you've got bezel I correction on, the cursor fly. will be right behind that bezel, and if you don't have it, it will be, you know, <laughs> half on one screen, half on yeah, the other. Yeah, see, that's not good. No, you're aiming at a at a black line. You're aiming at a. You're aiming. You're. you're so your focus would be on that. Dell logo well, this, underneath. This the is really monitor. so. Do, I mean, do stock traders use it, or somebody who's got a more practical application? Oh, uh, absolutely, they could. Because I mean, before, if you wanted six displays, you had to have special graphics cards. Yeah, yeah. Right. Like so the now, Matrox, multi heads. Or yeah, something. yeah. Right now, you can do that on one. For Good. I don't, I don't know. If let's be four hundred ninety nine dollars. That's the like fifty eight seventy. Fifty eight seventy Infinity Edition. And is It'll it a good card? Later this month, I think. If you just wanted a regular one display. Yeah. Good choice. I mean, it's it's the exact same GPU performance as... It would be actually be a little bit better because it has two gig frame buffer instead of one gig. It's huge, yeah. But you can connect one display to it. You can connect two displays to it now and then add as you go type of deal. You could, you could if you have three monitors, you could do a three three monitor iPhone. You know setup. what this comes from? Monitors are so cheap that this is kind of... That's what this comes from, yeah. I would guess. Yeah. I mean, we, we were debating getting six 30-inch displays... To do this instead of six twenty-two inch displays, <laughs> I don't um, think there's enough room. We've got we've got a we've got a lot of thirty-inch displays in house in different areas, like at different offices. We could pull together and do so it. So funny. Uh, but you, then we'd have to have six of the hundred-dollar active right. adapters, right? Which is a little bit of a pain. That's there. a lot. Yeah, that'd be oh, six hundred dollars in converters yeah. mm. from DisplayPort to DVI. So. Well, let's get to our Twitter questions. Lots right. of people have questions for uh, Ryan. Ryan Shrout of PC Perspective. This week in computer hardware is on the air. Let's start with uh, W. Is it W? WWNSX. Yep. I guess is his handle. Will Nvidia come out with a new N Force 10 or X chipset with audio like the old Soundstorm? Seems like they were going to do that a couple of years back. Um. So Soundstorm is actually a great. It was it was the audio aspect of uh, one of the first NVIDIA chipsets. It was Enforce 2. Hmm. It's their second offering of a chipset ever. It was perhaps the single best audio solution that was available at the time and it still has a lot of people that are in love with it wow. uh, because it did something. It does a feature that very few products even today still do or even still today don't do and that is Dolby encoding. Not decoding but encoding where it would take the audio output from say a game like Doom 3, mm -hmm. it was not Dolby. And it would convert it to multi-channel Dolby audio format to send out through a digital output that you could send to a receiver as a single cable as opposed to having to send six separate channels out to your receiver. Oh. So I actually did that. It was very cool. There are some cards you can get now, but they're pretty high end. This was on an integrated graph. This was integrated audio on this motherboard that did this mm. at the time. Uh, unfortunately for WWNSX, uh, NVIDIA is pretty much out of the chipset business altogether. They got pushed out. They, they voluntarily left the AMD chipset market after the AMD ATI merger. They got kicked out of the Intel chipset business as Intel changed their busing, bus, the processor buses and then didn't continue to license them to NVIDIA. 
And then in the mobile form factor, their last chipset was probably the one in the MacBook Pro, the uh, uh, GeForce 9400M type thing. And now we know of Ion 2, the next generation Ion is a discrete graphic solution, not really a chipset. So I do not think we'll be getting anything from NVIDIA with the Enforce brand as a chipset anymore, hmm. which is unfortunate, but it happens. That's what happens. I didn't realize they were up to 10. They 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 have I think the they they have the Enforce nine nine eighty series for AMD parts I guess they used to be a great uh, but it was a rebranded seven series right. and I don't know what happened to eight great so. chipset yeah uh, next question from IT Master I have an old ATI GPU lying around can I add this to my system with a GTX two sixty and then add a second monitor he's well, actually not another monitor he already has two add a third monitor. Right. Yes, the answer is yes. Uh, if you have a GTX 260, you got two monitors hooked up to it, you absolutely can install uh, an ATI GPU if you have Windows 7 or Windows XP. So Windows so 7. not Windows Vista. Why not Vista? Well, so Windows XP had a driver model. Right. Windows Vista changed the driver model. Right. They tried Confused to fix some Confused everybody, things, yes. But what happened was they prevented different drivers or drivers from different vendors being installed on the same system. So if you had a GeForce 260 and an older NVIDIA GPU lying around, you could install both of those in a Vista system. But you couldn't install an NVIDIA GPU and an ATI GPU. Now in Windows 7, you absolutely can. You can get a GTX 260 and put anything from ATI or Matrox or S3 or Intel or anything like that in there. And it will work just fine. And then you can run another two monitors off it if you want. Everything's better. Yep. With Windows 7. <laughs> Danielle Brewer says, I'm scared of ATI cards due to their driver issues from years ago. Yeah, we used to call the driver of the month club, and they were always breaking. He says, NVIDIA seems more stable these days. Should I switch? I assume this means that uh, they're interested in the Radeon HD 5000 series of graphics right, cards because right. those are the, those are the newest, hot ones. bestest. The, hot, the newest, new hotness. Bestest out, right? Yep. Bestest. Um, their their drivers are much better. ATI's drivers are much better today than they were. Before. It's not the problem they used to be. It's yeah, exactly they they yeah. do a very good job. Uh, I I'm a fan of their driver of the month club now because they they release drivers on a regular basis and they are a good. And it's funny because earlier uh, this month, Nvidia was the one that had the driver problem. They released the driver driver version one ninety six seventy five. This was a Wickle certified uh, Windows hardware quality. W H Q L. Yeah, w -H -Q -L. I didn't know it was pronounced Wickle. That's the only reason I'd ever, that's, that's all I'd ever heard it called. So that's, I, and every time I say it now, I think they probably don't know. That. Nobody knows what you're, hell um, you're talking about. But this was an official release driver. This wasn't a beta driver that came out from NVIDIA. And there were reports of it killing GPUs. There were reports of uh, that driver turning off fans when it shouldn't have on a graphics card and killing an NVIDIA, it killing your card. So they pulled the driver. Hmm. Uh, so it, the truth is it can happen to, to either side at any time. This has just happened to be the most recent instance. Right. It's not like I would say don't trust NVIDIA drivers. No. So. No. I think that that was the old. That was then. Yes. We don't have those problems anymore. Finally, Night Owler says the new i7-930 is a disappointment. disappointment at 45 nanometers. Why didn't Intel use that new 32 nanometer processor for their high-end socket? That's a good question. Why? Why 45? 45 is because, well, the Core i7-930 is really just a speed bump over the Core i7-920. And 32 nanometer process, the first desktop part released was for the LGA 1156 socket, the kind of mainstream lower end part. Those were the Clark Darrell CPUs that had the integrated graphics on the chip. I love it when you talk like that. Uh, uh, but <laughs> Golf Town, sorry, when it comes out, you. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Uh, that was Golf, my Alec Baldwin Golf Town, when it comes out, <laughs> yeah. the six core processor, it yeah. uses a 32 nanometer process. So. And that is in the same processor socket that he's looking for. It will be a super expensive part, expected to be a thousand dollar CPU. Will we? We'll see thirty two nanometer Westmere architecture CPUs. More of them come into these the the quad core market like he's looking for here. Um, but I, I don't understand it being a disappointment. I mean, it's just nothing fantastically <laughs> new or different. It's a speed bump, and that's and that's right. what it's branded as. You know, the nine twenty to the nine to the nine thirty. So, uh, well, yeah, I mean, I guess because, you know, the, the, the 32 nanometer process is cooler, doesn't generate as much it heat. It just takes time. It takes efficient. time to move all their product lines. I mean, right. they moved up. 32. You have to build new fabs. You can't just 
Say, right. oh, we're going to make 32 nanometers and they, now. And they move 32 nanometer up in production. Yeah, that's really the key, is they've right. gotten it here sooner than we thought. Right, right. We had Clarkdale parts and Arendelle parts for the desktop and mobile right. platform uh, well ahead of when we were originally told we were going to get that it. Was a, that was a big deal. Going, so I mean, Gulf 45 Town, was a big deal. Yeah. And Gulf Town will be the first kind of consumer, high-end, 32 nanometer part. And we'll see 32 nanometers from everything, eventually. Is, it, is AMD down to 32 as well? No. They're 45? They're still 45. Yeah. 45, you know, when you're an old timer like me, 45 is is mind-boggling. I mean, it wasn't that long ago. We were at 130, 190. Right. I mean, these are tight. And you know what? We're getting close to zero. You keep, you keep <laughs> we, we're getting close. You get, people, this is small. People say that zero, we, we that you we'll, can't go negative. We, we won't be getting any smaller. We won't be able to get any smaller yet. They keep figuring things out. It's like the hard drive manufacturers, right? Right. We, we keep thinking, oh, they can't possibly make anything over two terabyte hard drive. Right. And they're going to. So, but they're not going to go below zero. I don't think you can get less than zero nanometers. Well, you can get zero point something, I guess, and then you go into something lower than nanometers. I guess. Oh, you yeah, get you can go molecular computing and, and what's and all smaller that than a nano? I don't. I don't know. Pico. Picometer. I don't know. Is, is, is Pico smaller? I don't know. Than I, I, chat room will know for sure. Like chat room. What? How? What is the? Uh, what is the uh, hierarchy? It is Pico. There you go. See. Picometer. Sometimes I pretend I know what's going on. So soon, and then there's femto. <laughs> Soon we will be talking about picometers. Right. Damn. What a world. What a world. Sooner than we think. You can listen to this show on iTunes. Uh, if you want to uh, subscribe to it, just go to iTunes and search for TWICH. We will soon have video. Is it video yet? I don't think so. I Not think yet. soon. Any day now. We shoot video and you can watch us I live. Go upstairs and ask. I don't, I don't think yeah, it's go, video. Yeah, go yet. Beat, beat up Tony. <laughs> he's, the, he's the whole. We, no, I think we're uh, within weeks. We're very close. Cool. We edit video. We just uh, we didn't want to roll out all of the video shows at once, <laughs> right? So every week we're gonna sh or sh do another show. So you're 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 on the runway. <laughs> you're on the runway, and we are doing a video. I'm sitting show. on the tarmac. Is you're that, on, the tarmac. I'm on the tarmac. You're number three on the runway. <laughs> we are doing video. You can watch us do this show every uh, Wednesday at uh, three p.m. Pacific. That's six p.m. Eastern time. And I oh the time zones are gonna change with the UTC. So you just figure it out. That's right. We got a time next shift week, coming in. Next the, week's going to week, be different. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and I can't ever remember how it changes. But it, but nevertheless, do do watch us live at live.twit.tv. Uh, or you can find out more about subscribing and all the different platforms at twit.tv slash twitch. Ryan Shroud is at PC Perspective. If you go to pcper.com, you can read up all about everything. And you can email Ryan right here, ryan at twit.tv. so nice when you're out here. I just really enjoy it. I, it's 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 a it's a great drive. I noticed. I can tell. I think you guys yeah. had a lot of rain recently. Everything yes, is so very green, green, isn't it? Everything is very green. Yeah. I was out in Fremont today. The hills were very green there, and that's usually this not is the, the case. this is one of the prettiest times of year because yeah. uh, the rainy season is ending, so it's not it's getting warmer and sunnier, and everything's green. This is usually when I'm like, I should probably move out here. This is when you want to move out, but, but you know, Kentucky's green. Kentucky's Kentucky gorgeous. has a lot of green. Oh, it's gorgeous. Yeah. Thank you, Ryan. We'll see you next week on Twitch.